All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jamie, and I am one of the sisters um, of Cozy Up Knits. We have a regular weekly podcast um, on this channel if you've stumbled across this video. Uh, but today, I have something different for you. I have a little demo that I want to show everybody. Um, over the last few years, um, the sisters and I have been knitting for our local farmers markets, all kinds of different chunky knits and um, fun things for winter. But one of the items that was kind of our specialty was these little kids uh, slippers or booties. Um, and so I, I've been asked for so long um, for a pattern. So I am not calling this a tutorial or a pattern. I'm going to call it a demo because all of the tips and tricks and everything is in my head. I don't have it written down. Um, I'm not an avid um, crocheter and I do crochet and knit these. So I'm not sure of terminology and numbers. So I just wanted to show you how I make them. And I do believe that with this demo, you will be able to take this um, all the techniques and make different sizes, um, use different materials, and I just think it's a good basis um, for you to be able to take this and do with it what you will. So I'll show you all the materials that we use, and then, like I said, you're able to take this and make all kinds of different things. We make like right from, well, made, we don't do it any lo anymore. So this is not, I'm not trying to sell these. That is not what this is about. I want to show you how to make them but we've made little wee ones um like a newborn and uh, we were making all the way up to about a child size 12. Uh, one year i did attempt making adult ones and so that was a little bit more tricky uh, the size of them and actually was after knitting so many of them um, was getting a little bit hard on my wrists but that was fun so they're very you can definitely make adult sizes um, i'll have a few little um, hints how to do that as I'm working through this booty. So let's start with the materials. So a few years ago, we were graciously gifted three giant hides of moose leather. We are from Northern Alberta, in case you're wondering if you haven't you know, watched our podcast or know who we are. We, are uh, we live in Northern Alberta, Canada. And so our grandmother had a big tote full of moose hide leather. And she just kind of always had the intentions of making things with it. And when she um, heard that we were attempting and trying to make um, slippers uh, with leather bottoms, um, at one point I was just sourcing out, I was buying it kind of wholesale, like um, kind of just a, a different kind of leather, like a, just a leather, a soft leather. But when she gave us this, I went, oh my gosh, this is so perfect because the mousse is just so, it's sturdy and um, it, it's just, it's easy to work with. So we had a big giant hide of moose so we made different cutouts um, different sizes for different feet um, one thing you know when you're working on your sizes what we did is we actually used so for the sole we used the an actual sole of the shoe to get that outer and then on our inner um, we cut all of our inners um, about a centimeter um, a centimeter or so less because that's you're going to end up putting your holes in here and it's going to end up kind of folding up so this is actually the size of the foot and then your sole is a little bit bigger so that's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at sizes so yeah um between the four of us we would trace the mousse and cut it and then we um we ordered some fleece uh, we ordered like just big rolls of fleece um in order to make these this is all stuff that you can just kind of work with it i even know i've seen in some um, fabric stores or different yarn shops they actually carry these soles already pre-cut um, I think there's a company in Alberta called brick bubble and she does lots of wood cu wood cuts and different things and I believe at one point I did see soles on her site so look around see if you can find some leather soles this demo is shown by working off a pre-existing sole um, I will not I don't know and I just don't make them uh, with a knitted sole so that's for you to figure out this is off a pre-existing sole that you end up punching so some sort of inner some leather or whatever also with the leather it's non-slip which is very important um, for making stuff for children um, we have lots of children amongst us and i don't like when they wear the full knitted bottoms when they're little because they just slip all over so this is perfect for non-slip anyway 
let's get on with it. So the first thing is, like I said, you need to get your soles. You need to, whether you buy them pre-punched or not, uh, we did not. So along with cutting the soles and, you know, um, attaching the, in, the insole, actually another thing you can get, which I do have some left of, is a double, is a nice sheep. I have some sheep shearling out that my grandmother also gave us. So it's a two-sided, so it's got the leather on the side and then the sheep shearling on this side, all one piece. So I just have to cut it out. So there's so many options, guys. But anyway, aside from that, ours did not have holes. So here is my trusty hole punch, leather punch. And so that was also another part of making the soles. And so for myself, when I did it, I when I first started, I was actually measuring the distance between each hole that lasted about three soles and then I went that's not happening I've got a good eye so they end up just getting spaced um, not quite a centimeter apart um, gosh I should go get my measuring tape because I should probably measure that for you guys but okay also I do not count how many holes so that is why I will not do a pattern because I I just I just wing it and it works out so um, for cutting holes, I always just started at the middle of the, this is where I like to start when we're knitting them, is at the very middle of the heel. And then I just make my holes that far apart. With my eye, I've probably punched hundreds. I've punched hundreds of these. So anyway, you work your way around, making it even, as even as possible, and a little bit away from the edge. If you put it right up close, too close to the edge, I've had that where I've accidentally had it too close and if maybe part of the hide is a little softer, we have different, you know, hides have very different from this giant moose hide, they're softer and they're thicker and harder and, you know, there's markings and see they all already look a little different. Um, it can pull, like when you're using your crochet hook and pulling the wool through, uh, you can actually rip right through it if it's a really soft piece of leather. So you want to make sure that it's far enough away uh, from the edge. All right. I'm getting messages here on my phone. Okay, so once you've got your punch, all right, you've got your soles ready to go, different sizes, you are going to need, all right, you are going to need a couple sizes of crochet hook. Um, for these holes, I found um, my smallest is a 2.75. I'm using the clover in the C. You can't see that, 2.75. It's a little one. It needs to fit through the hole nicely because you're going to be pulling the wool through on your first round. This is only used for the first round to get your wool attached. And then the body of the slipper, mine is an L, so an 8.0 millimeter. And that is used for the foot up to here. And then I, you know, when I, when my oldest was young, um, I had um, been given a pair of these another brand you've seen them all over the place um but it was all crocheted and so i'm assuming they just took it and went all the way up but being a knitter and when i first started making these i really wanted to try to to knit them and i i could not for the life of me figure you know get a nice look for the sole to get the yarn attached so i figured we'll crochet the bottom and then i actually pick it up we pick up stitches around and for these i'm using 8.0 millimeter uh dpns so, oh, these are actually 7.5 millimeter. Anyway, somewhere in there. Like I said, it's not a science, but you do want a bulky, depending on whatever kind of wool you're using, you want to use the proper gauge of hook and needle for your wool. You can definitely make these out of worsted or chunky or whatever. This is definitely a super bulky. I will show you the wool that we use. All right, so the, that's your hooks. You will need a darning needle, hooks, needles, darning needle, wool. All right, let me show you what I use for wool. So we are very fortunate in Alberta to have a wonderful mill um, not too far from us. Well, far enough that I have to order. I can't go there and get it. We were, we were able to get, um, we took a tour of this a couple years ago, of custom woolen mills. So for the booties, I use a six-strand unspun natural wool. Um, they make it in all different colors. There's some dyed colors. Today we're going to be making the navy with the light gray. Um, so there's the light gray out of the package. Um, so the ones that we were using is an unspun. It does not matter. It does not matter what you use. But this is what we had and been using for the last couple of years. 
And so, um, again, this is unspun, so it does just fall apart, um, the fibers. So as we're knitting, I'm always sort of twisting and it's very strong once it's twisted, like super strong um, and very warm and a natural fiber. I wanted natural fibers um, for the feet. There's kind of a darker version that comes in, I don't know, 20 colors, 20, 30 colors. I don't know. I've got lots. I've made lots of different colors over the, over the years, but today we're going to make navy ones. So I use two contrasting colors. You can use anything, anything you want, but that's what I use and that's what we're using today. So I think we better just get started on this. All right, here it is. Oh, and some lace. Oh, yes, lace. I buy the lace at Michael's. So I'm pretty sure Michael's is available pretty well all over the place, Canada and US for sure. Um, but if not, there it is in the beige, a big roll of lace. I think it's like $14.99 in Canada and I always use my 40% off coupon. So there's a little, a little tip for that. You don't have to use leather. But I did. Okay, let's get started and see if this is going to be a successful video, <laughs> if it's even helpful at all. Okay, we are going to make the smaller size because it will take us a little bit longer. Oh, no. Not that one. Sorry. Here we go. This is roughly a child's six, so like a two-year-old, I think, somewhere in there. Uh, 18 months to two and a half, somewhere in there. So it's not super big. And we are going to start with the navy. Okay, so first things first, let's just spin off a little bit of our wool. I work it with the sole facing me. So the sole will be facing towards me. Here's my very unprofessional setup because, <laughs> you know, I don't have a lot of cameras. So sole facing towards you. I start at the top of the heel right at the very top. As you can see, my spacing is a little off, but it all works out in the end. So stick your crochet hook through. This is also going to be dependent. I will not be teaching you how to crochet and how to knit. This is, you need to know how to single crochet and do a knit and purl. That is it. I think it's called a single crochet. I am not a crocheter. So we're going to just loop, loop our wool, leaving us enough of a tail here. Well, just a bit of a tail. We don't have to weave that one in. And you're going to just pull or it gets a little tricky getting through the wool or through the holes. You're going to pull your looped yarn and then using your working wool, you're going to do a single crochet. If that's what it's called, or maybe it's called a chain stitch. I don't know what it's called. You stick it through and loop it through. All right. And then holding, if you lay this tail kind of along here, you can crochet it in as you go and it will lay flat and you won't have a big long strand in the middle. So we're gonna do it again. We're gonna stick it through the second hole, working, this would be counterclockwise. Okay, you're gonna bring it through. Okay, and loop it on. So there's two stitches on. Okay, all right. And we're going to continue that all the way around. So we'll do it again, bring it through. Okay. So like I said, if you know how to crochet, you just stick your hook through, grab the yarn, pull it through the hole, pop it through, pull it up a little bit, get some nice tension. You don't want to do it real tight. I like to give it a little pull through so it's not super tight against the, you know what I mean? If you stick it in and just Try to do your single crochet right away. I like to pull it out a little bit. All right, so we'll go all the way around and we'll see you on the other side. Here we are, back around. So I've got one more left to do. So we're gonna do our last one. And then we're going to pull enough of a loop through. There we go. We're going to put this away for now. That's the part that gets a little bit tiring on, on my wrists. And so after making hundreds of them, I'm actually not able to make them anymore because of that. So, but of course they make perfect little gifts. And I still make them once in a while uh, for gifts, but not in a mass production sort of way. So now we are going to attach our larger hook. 
and we need to join these two stitches together. All right. So that's probably called something in crochet, but you, I'm going to stick my needle tip through the stitch over on this side and wrap the yarn and pull it through that loop and also through the loop on this one, joining like how you would join a circle or something. So we've got a completed circle and there we go. So now our first row, um, now if you're making, let's say, here's something different. So if you're making, say, adult sizes, I think if I remember correctly, I did a couple rounds of where you're just single crocheting in every stitch. There's no decreases yet. For the children's ones that I found, I did just, it was necessary just to do one row. So we are gonna do one round completely of single crochets where you're just, you're just sticking it into the stitch here and bringing it around. I do a, one of those and then in every stitch, you're doing what I do believe is called a single crochet all the way around, right? Single crochets, stick your hook through under both. I'm sticking it under both legs of the V. Actually, I guess that's a pretty important point to say. I'm sticking it under both legs of the V and bringing it through. So under, around, okay? So all the way around, and then we'll get into some decreasing and color changing. So we'll see you on the other side. All right. So I've gone and I've completed my round of once around with single crochets. And now I need to again join the first stitch of the round with my last stitch. Now, you can use this little technique um, whenever you're wanting to do any color changes. For this pattern here, I do one round now in my light gray. So I will show you how to join that because you actually join it. I'm sure for anyone that crochets, this is just how you do it. Um, but you're going to stick your needle tip into the first stitch of that round. And since I'm going to use a, a different color, I'm going to loop, oopsies, I'm going to loop my new color over the needle, over the hook, and pull that through. Instead of the blue like last round, I'm pulling the gray through and all the way through. And then this is when I sort of cinch up my main color there. Now I'm going to leave this hanging. We will not cut either of these till the booty is done. So we will not need to weave in any ends until the very, very end. Um, I try to do that even if I'm doing two, three, four colors, I try to carry them all the way up because who wants to weave in ends? And there's really not that many rounds. That was round one. We've got, let's see, two decrease rounds. And then we're gonna pick up and knit the cuff. These take no time at all. Okay, so for the second round of a child one, we've done one round of single crochets. Now we are going to need to do some of the shaping, which is how we get the flatter top. If we were just to keep knitting, it would go straight up. So this first round, we are going to do some decreasing. So we are going to, this is where I don't have numbers and how many stitches to do. It's kind of a trial and error. And what I have found is you're going to now do some single crochets up until this part of the boot. So the part where you want it to come over like this. So let's say to about here, all right? So we're gonna single crochet till right about just before the toe would start and we're gonna work some decreasing. All right, so let's get there. We'll work our single crochets up oh, and twist. And if you hold again this tail from the second color, you can actually, you can see it here, you can knit it, you go around, come underneath that one Grab your working one, bring it around, and you can actually crochet this end right in. See, I'm going over it, and now it is tucked away around it. No need to weave in that end. I hear my son just woke up from his nap, and he's in his crib, and he's screaming. He'll play for a little bit in there, I think. So we're going to go all the way to about there. 
So right to about here where you're going to start a rounded toe. And what we're going to do on the first round of decreases is we're going to skip one, crochet one, skip one, crochet one, skip one. And that will start now. So instead of knitting or crocheting into the stitch, I'm going to crochet into the next one. We're going to skip one. And then you're going to go right into the immediate one of your next one. So your first decrease round is skip one. Where did I just do? Skip one, crochet one, skip one, crochet one, skip one. So this is the part where, depending on the sizes, you know, you may feel you need, um, like the larger the size, like I said, for adults, I did, I think, a couple rounds of single crochet, and then I probably did a couple rounds of the single, um, where you skip one, crochet one, skip one, crochet one, instead of the next round, which is double decreases. So you will have to play around with that until you like the top look, the shape of your foot. Um, but it takes such little time that to rip it back and try different decrease, um, ratio is fine. So I've done it to about here. I've done my decreases now from about this section all the way to this section around the toe. So it's decreased it a little bit. You can see we're getting a little flatter. And now we will continue to the end in just single. And your colors can get mighty twisted here. Just untwist them. All the awkward things on the video, of course. Well, it wouldn't be me if it wasn't awkward. We all know that. So there we go. Okay. This also very much shows my personality as the sister who doesn't really um, pay attention to details and just goes with the flow. <laughs> if I mess up in my knitting or crocheting, I just, I figure it out. I'm, I barely rip things out and pay much attention to counts and stuff. So that is why this is a demo. And not, not like a detailed number tutorial. But I trust all of your creativeness that you will be able to take this and do it. So for this um, pattern exactly, I do just one round in my contrasting color. And then now I'm going to pick up my blue again. You can do this in any color, color way you want. So now I need to join my blue. I have that gap. So I'm going to stick my needle in, crochet hook into the one, my first stitch from the last round, grab my main color, loop it through, bring it through there and bring it through the loop on the needle or the hook. I keep saying needle. Give that one a good cinch. All right. So that was first round of decreases. So we did a round of single crochet. Then we did a round where you crochet one, skip one, crochet one, skip one over the toe. Now we're going to do our double decrease round. So we're going to do one of these. We're going to single crochet up until just about the same point as you did um, in the last round. All right, right up till where the toe is going to start to round. Mm, let's go one more. Take a look. Yep, that looks about right. And now we're going to double decrease, or I'm not sure we call it, just decrease every stitch. So we're going to skip one, skip one, skip one, skip one, all the way around. So we'll start that here where we skip a stitch. We do it again. We're gonna skip that one, go into the next. Let's see, what am I doing here? Yep, skip one, go into the next one, skip one, go to the next, skip one, go to the next. Usually about, well for this size, it's about five or six times. Again, skip one. Now what we're gonna do is before we continue on, we're gonna go back and then back one more time. And that is what is going to give us this little section here. So on this was this, the skip one, crochet one. This is where we skip, skip, skip. And then we're gonna turn around and go back and then back. And that gives us our nice flat top. So we've gone right about to here where we're skipping every round. Now we're gonna turn directions. We're gonna go back the way we just worked and we're gonna skip one, skip one. Usually ends up being about twice. Three or, you know, depending on your size, this is for a smaller one. So from the stitch we're in, we're gonna go backwards and go back into this one by skipping one. Not sure what that's called in crochet, but we're gonna skip one. We're gonna skip this one, go into the next one. Depending on the size, you can see, okay, do I wanna skip one more? Let me 
you see. I might just do one more. This is where it's sort of, you got to play around with it. And then we're going to turn it one more time and go back. And at this point, you really only have one to skip. And you're going to bring it over here, and then we're going to continue on the way. So we're going to skip, bring it over. That's given us our nice flat top. And now we're going to single, single crochet all the way to the end, and we are done with our crochet rounds. So that has built the bottom of the slipper, the foot. All right, let's get to the end. And now all the knitters go, yay, I get, a, I get to knit. I get to knit. Okay. Off the screen, sorry. Single crochet to the end. For this next round, I am going to be using my blue. So I'm going to, again, join my last stitch to the first stitch by sticking the needle through the first stitch of that round, grabbing my wool, pulling it through, and joining it. So now we're going to leave a loop like this. And get ready your crochet hook because you're done with it. So we've got a nice base right here. Look at that. All right. So the next part is where we get to use our double pointed needles or DPNs. I will probably call them DPNs now. And we're going to knit the cuff. And the cuff is only, gosh, five rounds maybe? One, two, three, four, five. So Five rounds on, for this size, roughly 16 stitches. I found for my little, my little sizes, um, as we were always making the same sizes, I did get into a bit of a rhythm. I had, let's say for our little baby sizes, ended up being like 10 stitches on my ribbing. And then my size two was 12 stitches. My size four was 14 stitches. My size six, 16, eight, 18, and so on. Um, using an even number for my ribbing as I'm doing a knit one purl one so you want to have a multiple of two and you're just going to essentially pick up every stitch around here and however many that ends up being that's how many it is <laughs> and you can decide if that's too many too few you can figure that out but a multiple of two and so our first round is going to be the pick up and knit round and we are going to our first DPN into the loop that was left from our crochet hook and again you're gonna I guess I just said that you'll need to know how to do a pick up and knit but one thing I do want to say one little detail that I like to do is when I'm picking up on these booties you have the two legs of the of the V I stick my needle into the second the one on the inside under that leg and I leave one leg out um, I just like it think it makes a nice let's see it with the lace here it just makes a nice edging right here so that's how I get that is I I use my needle when I'm picking up and knitting I am going to pick up into the second leg it's a little bit dark isn't it now that might be too bright and blowing out oh maybe I should have had that the whole time I'm not sure my lighting is not super so Anyway, we're going to pick up a knit. Using one here. So yes, you do need to do that, know how to do that, because I'm not really going to show um, what I do anyway, is I stick my needle tip, like I said, into the second leg of that V, wrap my yarn around, kind of like a crochet hook, and pull it through. So now I have two. So I'm going to put, there's three, four, Five. I'm going to pick up about five. You're going to pick up about a third of your stitches. I, I plan to pick up about 16 stitches on this size, so I'm going to pick up a third of them on this needle, and then I'm going to grab my second DPN, and I'm going to continue on. I'm going to pick up another five or six. All right, using the second leg. Now, when you get to this section, this middle section, there are no legs. There's no Vs, but there's little holes, and so you'll see that when you're coming around. There's a little hole here, there's one here, here, around this middle part. So you're just gonna stick your needle tip into that hole. Nothing fancy. So one, two, three, four, five. So that gives me 10 total, and then my last needle, I'm gonna pick up six to make 16. Just because I know for this size, that's how many I pick up. But you may need to just kind of count 
count around, see how many um, spaces you have to pick up and then figure out um, if you wanna go up or down to make it even. Okay, so you need to, yes, I said pick up and even mount. So let's continue on. We just got our second needle in, now we're gonna use our third needle. Again, picking up and knitting into the second leg or the inside leg of that V. And I need three more. Four, five, and six. I know there's a few different methods to pick up and knit, but that's what I do. So now I've got my stitches divided as evenly as possible onto three needles and ready to knit the first round. So back to your beginning. It's just a basic knitting in the round, a little cuff, and then we're done. So grab your fourth PPN. Make sure we're still recording, yep. All right, and for this color scheme that I have going on, I do one round knitting in the blue, and then I will use my main color. So we're gonna do a knit one, purl one, all the way around. And I like to really think loosely. Um, getting little booties onto little kids can be tricky enough as it is. So we like to keep it as loose as possible. We also will do a loose bind off so that there's a little bit of elasticity. There's not a lot of give with this 100% wool, I find. So I like to knit as loosely as possible. Knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl. We'll just continue to knit around. I want to get around and then we'll add that second color and then I'll meet you at the end because we're going to just knit five, well, essentially, oh, these strands. All right. So yes, like I was saying, we want to have a loose cuff. We don't want it too tight around. You want to have enough stitches that you can get your little person's foot or your big person's foot into the booty. Let me think what other little tips. They're so fun. They are fun to make. They are fun. Get a little bit, a little finicky. You got a lot of needles and, and wool kind of hanging out of everywhere. All right, we're just coming around to the end of the first row. And then I will, all right, we've ended that. So for this color scheme, I'll do two rounds now in my CC, in my light gray, and then one round again in my blue, and then we'll bind off. So I'm gonna meet you back once I've done this. So that is, once you've picked up a knit for this size and however high, gosh, at this point, you could make them super long, like up, up the leg, more like a sock booty, or just leave it at that and have a little, like a little ankle booty. You can kind of do whatever, but for this wool at this gauge, for this size, I do one round in my main color, two rounds in my CC. One round in my main color, so one, four? That's why I pick up a knit, one, two, three, four. Yes, only four rounds. Four rounds of ribbing and then we'll do the bind off. So let's meet back and I will do the bind off. Show you how I do my loose bind off. I've completed my rounds of ribbing and now that I'm done I am going to um, I'm going to take off the main or the contrasting color I'm just going to rip that apart because we are done with that you know we're going to stick our tail in the middle some interesting things happening outside my window okay we're going to do the bind off now I think this I can't remember what I think this is the surprisingly stretchy bind off is it Jenny's I can't quite remember if this is it, but it's the one, well, I'll show you, but I would say use your favorite stretchy bind off, um, but just something to give it a little bit, like I said, there's not a lot of give, um, but something just so that, you know, when you pull, when you bind something off and you pull on it, it's really tight, and there's nothing, you need something a little bit elastic because they've got to be able to get their foot into it. Um, yeah, so what I do, is my first stitch I just knit. I don't do anything special with my first stitch because I want to join it in the round nicely here. So I'm going to knit my first stitch. Now I've done a knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one ribbing all the way around. 
So after I knit my first stitch, I am going to bring my yarn, I'm gonna yarn over before my purl so that I have an extra bit of yarn on the needles before I bind it off and then I pull my yarn over, over and then my first stitch over. So it's kind of like a double bind off. Should have looked that up. I do believe that's Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. So you pull the yarn over, over first and then you bind off the first stitch. All right, now I've got a knit stitch neck so my yarn's already in the front. I will knit that one, creating a yarn over and then I will pull the yarn over, over, and then the purl stitch over. All right, so we're gonna continue in that manner, just making sure to yarn over and yarn over loosely. Let's think really loosely as we're binding off. We do not want a tight bind off. We want it as loose as possible. So loosen up your shoulders, loosen it up. Just loosen up people and you'll have a nice bind off. We'll work that all the way around. Then we will, oops, what am I doing? Then we will sew in our ends. What am I doing? I'm done with this needle now. Why is this not working out? All right. When you're working on DPNs and binding off, you can just get rid of a needle when you come to the end of it. I've only made hundreds of these. I think I would know that. Continue loose bind off. Then we're going to attach a lace. I will kind of show you how I do that and then you get to make another one. So I hope this has been helpful. I, I know it's a little hard with my camera angle, uh, but I just wanted to kind of walk you through just some tips. I know when I was starting to make them, I tried everything. Like I had no idea. I tried with needle, knitting needles and different, I don't know, different stitches and whatever. And I think I tried to make it more complicated than it really is. It's super simple. Um, but you know, figuring out kind of the decreases around the toe and some different things, you'll, I'm sure, find more ways. The other thing is you do not need to knit this cuff. You can totally crochet it. Just crochet in a circle until your cuff is as long as you want. I think that's how I've seen most of them, but I did want to be a little different when we were selling them at the markets. I wanted to have something a little unique, um, and of course, being a knitter, I really wanted to have that nice ribbing look. I really like those stitches. And it just made it a little different. All right, we're just coming, oops, off screen. We're just coming to the end of my loose bind off. Oops, forgot to yarn over. Yarn over for the purl. And then we'll sew in our ends, attach our boot, or attach our laces, and really, we have done this in about a half an hour. So, half an hour per slipper for the little guys anyway. And our last one. Okay, tails on the inside. Of course, this is just roving or unspun, so we can just rip it off. We're gonna join that last, that last uh, stitch. Same as way, same way as I did with the crochet. I actually sometimes stick my hook in at this point, stick it through my first stitch, pull it through, pull it through, pull it all the way through now. Of course, this is the roving, so this is sometimes where I tear my wool and it really frustrates me because then I don't have anything to sew in. And there we go. So there's your completed slipper almost. Of course, we got to tie in our ends. Oh, I would always, I'm making mass quantities of these. And Sarah, my sister, if, you, um, if you've if you seen our, our little episodes, you know that I have three sisters. And Sarah would often, before we would have a big wholesale order or a market, would come over to help me with the last finishing touches. I, I, did, I did try to teach them how to make booties one day, but they were just too slow. So I did make the booties, but... They helped me with all the finishing touches. So I just, oops, that looked way more difficult than it needed to be. I'm just gonna sew in my ends. I like to go down into the inside. And of course, the nice thing about this unspun wool is that it will felt against itself. So no need to, I don't go crazy with sewing it in. I just, I just darn it in. A couple stitches on the inside down and in and cut it off. Nothing too fancy. 
But yeah, Sarah would end up coming over and having to sew in all my ends because I would just finish a pair and leave them and say, oh, I'll sew the ends in later. She did not like that. And then she would have to lace them because I, I, I would leave the laces till the end because it's kind of, you know, when you're making so many, you kind of get into a little bit of a um, assembly line mentality where you just sit down one night and okay, we'll lace and tag all the booties. Um, so I'm just sewing our last end here. And hey, if you like the video and you know people that want to make these, feel free to share it and let them know. And, you know, check out our weekly podcast. We are four sisters who knit and we design. We have some patterns on Ravelry and, you know, we just have a good old time. So feel free to check that out. All right, we are done with the booty. So let's quickly show you how I do the lace. Um, of course, when I'm doing them in mass productions, I already know my length of lace, but I do not for today. So I'll show you how I figure it out. I just wrap it around. It's still attached. I'm going to tie a knot and I'm just going to see if it's a good, I'll show you what I do. Kind of just do this. It's still attached. I kind of find a good width. I'm like, okay, that looks good. You want to have a little bit. I like to leave a little bit of an extra long lace um, so that as a mom or with little ones, you can double knot it. Um, I love the leather because I find that it really softens up over time and you can really get it and it stays and it doesn't fall apart and come undone. But of course, kids are kids and they chew their laces. Plus with the leather, they can chew it. It's not going to hurt them. So I'll give it a little trim. All right. And then I undo it. Of course, make a match. And then I'll show you how, where I put it in. So we just make a second one, the same length. Snip. Again. If you missed that, I get my roll of lace that comes in multiple colors at Michael's and it's about $14.99 Canadian and I use my coupon. Don't buy anything at Michael's without using a coupon. All right, so I start on the right side. Um, it doesn't matter, but I don't, I don't thread this or anything. I just stick it through. There's always a hole, like a nice little hole just right here, kind of on the, just the side of that front part. Stick it through and then I just, we, I kind of, the holes are big enough to just with your fingers. So I've looped it just through and then I pull it to where I'm going to tie it about there. I do that once again in the back. I find a spot where I can just stick it through. It's that, that is such a big gauge that I guess you could thread this on something and you could just, you know, weave it in. So I just kind of stick it in. I don't do anything specific. I do that so it's gone now through the back and then once more into the opposite side that you did the first time stick it through grab it from the inside i'm sure there's an easier way to do this but this is what i've done for three years so okay pull it out might need to adjust it so that they're equal of course just adjust it there tie a bow and voila you have a booty hooray it is satisfying to make these they're so fun oh, might have to make myself a pair all right okay so i hope that was helpful um it may not be as specific as some of you would like with numbers and stitch counts and whatnot but i do believe that is a good basis for you to be able to take the, you know, building the sole, picking up stitches, crocheting around, doing some decreases, knitting or crocheting the tops. I think you can do it. I think you can do it. So thank you so much for joining me. And I hope that you're able to make some Christmas gifts. They make awesome Christmas gifts because they're quick and who doesn't love a good leather sole slipper? So thanks so much. Check us out. Cozy Up Knits um, on Ravelry, Cozy Up Knits on Instagram, and here on YouTube. Have a great day. Happy knitting.